Hello to everybody, all our partners of all the Arab countries who are present with us today, as well as all our friends from other countries. I thank you all for being here. In order to launch this study, an important one and the first of its kind in the MENA region, Also, I would like to thank you for being here in this webinar in order to discuss the misinformation regarding uh, the uh, climate change as well as the environmental issues in our region. First of all, I would like to indicate to uh, point, point out Internews, which is a, a well-known establishment Uh, which is uh, in charge of the Earth uh, Network, which has worked tirelessly in order to organize four work workshops in order to organize studies in this respect. And also it's covered all the misinformation regarding the subjects. Internews was established uh, in 1937. Uh, which covered a lot of activities uh, in over 100, 100 countries all over the world. And it has trained tens of thousands of journalists. And this has also contributed uh, in the establishment of uh, uh, a well-established journalistic office in a, a number of fields, mostly related in professional journalism, uh, and covered subjects, which, uh, subjects like equality between genders in the field of journalism, as well as economies, uh, economy, health, and all other fields that are related to our daily life, the, our ways of life as a whole, as well as the uh, information, uh, the, the documented information, as well as uh, solutions to face all the issues we might face in different fields and subjects. Earth Network, uh, abbreviated is LGN, was established uh, uh, in the year 2004. And this establishment is uh, mainly focused on environmental journalism. especially in the Arab world and the MENA region and has contributed a lot uh, to and has assisted journalists not only in their countries uh, throughout their research uh, and surveys when it's when it comes to climate change especially uh, for instance for example the the last seminar uh, that was held in Dubai and other countries. This has helped a lot uh, journalists in this field. Also, I would like to point out to point out in this uh, introduction that that we still need more and more efforts when it comes to uh, climate journalism. Also, uh, all the challenges that are related to this field which is uh, most of the time marginalized in the all of the uh, all of the media worldwide however we need to need to know more about the subject and we need more expertise in the field and more training of course as well as investment because this sort of journalism uh, we know that uh, Arabic media uh, tries to invest and try to finance this sort of researches related to climate change and the environment, issues related to the environment. However, uh, we still face a lack of uh, information, lack of infrastructure, 
uh, lack of security in order to access information as it is. Of course, the study we have, uh, have conducted uh, in this respect, I would like to respect all the, the, the entire team. I would like to thank Hannah Bernstein, as well as Megan King, and Isabel and Sherry from Jordan. This team has worked with us for the last few months, since April to this day. We have worked together as one team, and we have collected a number of information and data uh, about a lot of written pieces and written articles, with them, whether they were correct or uh, misinformed. However, we have documented uh, all the articles in order to come up with a result that can help assist uh, Arabic journalists in Morocco, in Yemen, Iraq, uh, but overall in all Arab countries <clears throat> in order to come up with a good result that satisfies the journalistic corps. Uh, in order also to raise awareness in this respect and to uh, be able to point out all the misinformation we have uh, these days. And here in this region, we say that the MENA region is one of, of the regions that suffer the most uh, from climate change because the, num the, the rate of water in this in this country, it does not uh, exceed one point five of the global amount of water worldwide. So this sort of gap between the uh, natural resources and our human capital requires our intervention. Also, most plants in these uh, regions uh, are not. Uh, also, there is a number of uh, misinformation that we have been uh, coming across a lot lately. Sometimes, you know, some journalists uh, don't have uh, enough expertise, so they commit mistakes and their articles become published. Therefore, we receive misinformed articles. So we need to tackle all these things in order to come up with a good result and to correct our when it comes to the environment and the journalism within the Arab world. I will share with you a few angles or samples and the Arabic version as well as the English version will be both available on the website to be downloaded. So allow me now to share with you these samples. Can you please tell me what you can see? We see uh, a zoom in a zoom page we can see the study sorry allow me to try again now i think it's clear for everybody as you all know climate journalism in iraq morocco and yemen in the era of misinformation I would just like to point out the methodology we have uh, followed in order or adopted in order to prepare this study. As you have, as you can see here, 185 journalists have contributed to this study or, or survey. 27 from Morocco, 42 from Yemen, and 116 from Iraq. In addition to this, and of course we covered this in Arabic, French, 
English as well as the other language languages like, like Kurdish because we had many journalists from Iraq who are from uh, who have Kurd Kurdish origins. As you can see here, uh, it's about the coverage of uh, uh, journalistic pieces uh, uh, on the number on the, as you can see, sometimes you can cover this weekly, sometimes more than once a week, sometimes monthly, twice a month, and un, uh, under six times a year. In addition to this, We have adopted another way. We have also adopted a number of declarations uh, by the government. So to so what these uh, declarations point out? This is part of our methodology. The first uh, point is when it comes to this methodology, we conducted a number of meetings, direct meetings that I covered myself. I myself, I met with 13 journalists in all of Yemen, Morocco, and Iraq. As you can see, we cannot control uh, the uh, question of equality between gender. So I tried to do that while uh, conducting interviews. The fifth point is focus group discussions. And we have conducted a lot of uh, meetings in this respect, and we discussed in Morocco and two in Iraq. And that's for the language related reasons. I've also uh, faced a number of challenges in Yemen uh, for reasons related to uh, internet issues as well as other uh, uh, political and uh, health reasons in this country. Here we can see that's a fellow Moroccan journalist. And before I read the article, I would like to point out to point out that that we haven't asked uh, journalists about their names, and that for personal reasons, in order, uh, in order to for for privacy reasons. She is she lives within the country, and we didn't even point out if she's living in the country or abroad the country. It might happen that there are Moroccan journalists who live in Morocco or in Jordan. However, what matters to us the most is that they're working on 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 uh, climate related articles. As we have discussed, sometimes we share a lot of misinformation. So sometimes, as you can see, most uh, researchers. Uh, do not speak Arabic, so they use other languages and they use terms that maybe in the Arabic uh, context they lose their meaning. There is a huge uh, shortage in the resources, on in scientific researchers when it comes to this study. Therefore, the journalists focus on open source resources, which can cause sometimes to share in misinformation related to the uh, to the environment according to a Yemeni journalist the the data provided by the local authorities with regard to the climate changes are not correct and need to be documented further and this lack of information uh, makes uh, pushes Yemeni journalists to uh, adopt research and the reports by uh, international committees. As you can see, I cannot read everything you can see. However, we asked questions. Uh, we asked journalists about the resources 
uh, the adopt in order to uh, collect information when it comes to uh, they also said that they they go to and they they go to uh, well known websites and uh, news uh, outlets like CNN Al Jazeera. Sometimes, uh, TV, uh, TV news. We ask, ask all these questions, and you can see the results here. In orange, red, and blue. And a Moroccan journalist says that having access to uh, to information related to climate change in Morocco is restricted, and most journalists uh, should work independently in order to access this information. In other words, the the journalists who work in Morocco have to make extra efforts. In Iraq, a journalist said that uh, dependent journalists in Iraq face a lot of difficulties in order to access information and data related to climate change. So most data provided are from the government, from the government are not uh, correct and, and or not well documented. And for the journalist Yemeni, uh, Yemeni journalist, he says that uh, environmental journalism in Yemen is marginalized. And having a take, having access to information, documented information, are related to the to the climate, is very restricted. So that this is because the political parties in conflicts in Yemen uh, is using these subjects, which causes causes a lot of issues in order to access this information. So as you can see, there are a lot of similarities between these countries and the circumstances under which they all work. So uh, there is a, a role to play by journalists here. So when it comes to subjectivity, and especially when it comes to climate, For, in, for instance, if when we talk about animals that are going extinct, or when we talk about global warming, we don't need subjectivity to discuss this. This is a scientific fact. There are still a number of journalists in our world that's, who still point to out as still objective despite the lack of uh, data and resources also uh, here you can see there is a huge gap between Morocco Iraq and Yemen when it comes to uh, the fact that some journalists actually suffer some mistreatment and are not allowed to access information. The most important part of this survey, and which I have touched personally during the interviews I conducted, as well as during the discussions, is the need for, of journalists for two main things they need a lot of training because there is a lack of knowledge and lack of expertise. The other part is there is a lack of investment. Overall, I just wanted to share with you these uh, insights and you will see more and you will find more samples uh, with entire analysis uh, that covers the entire MENA region when it comes to climate change and why this uh, region more than any other is facing uh, more issues when it comes to climate change. Some journalists sometimes use 
confuse what is uh, environmental with what is climate uh, climate related. Sometimes if there is an issue of water in Jordan or Iraq, this has nothing to do with climate change. This has to do with the humans. It has to do with the environment. However, when it comes to climate, climate is a world topic. For instance, you have to reduce the temperature, and this requires a worldwide effort. Also, pollution. We have to reduce pollution. Pollution related to the air, uh, water, or any other part. Uh, I know I took this, uh, I've been talking for a bit too long, but I wanted to share with you uh, as much as possible so that I give uh, the floor to Rawan first. And she's from Jordan and she's the president of Arij. Rawan, can you please, can you please uh, remind me? Also, Zena Mejri is from Tunisia, and she's a dear friend, and she's uh, uh, an expert in making sure of uh, of the news whether they are misinformed or not, as well as our dear partner and friend Afrah from Yemen. And she's a journalist who controls and uh, keeps track of the environmental uh, issues in the Arab world. I welcome you all. And we're very happy to have you all with us today. Shukran, dear Khalid. I'm sorry, before we go to our uh friends here i would like to point out that that for all the participants here for those who wish to hear us in arabic i should go to use the interpretation option and should pick the the language he prefers he can listen and they can listen to this meeting in the language they see fit we have English to Arabic and Arabic to English. So please, if you have any technical issues, you can try this and you can pick the language that suits you in order to be able to follow up with us. Okay. I'm waiting for Hannah if she has a question. Okay, she has no questions. Okay, let's start with Mr. Rawan. Rawan, once again, uh, welcome, and we're very happy to have you with us today. Your interview, your contribution will be without a without a doubt, uh, very important. And you have read the survey and I would like to hear from you. What do you think about this survey? Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you very much, Mr. Khalid. Thank you for uh, make thank you Internews and the entire team. First of all, I would like to point out that uh, that uh, the, the, the consider counters were difficult and we would like uh, we wish our uh, people and friends from in Palestine and Lebanon I wish them all the best. Also, our friends in Sudan, I'm very sad uh, to see that a lot of Arab countries are undergoing a lot of hardships. And we appreciate the fact that there are uh, journalists who are covering uh, issues in very, very heated areas in, in our Arab world. Uh, there is a research uh, now available in both Arabic and English. And you have discussed a lot of points and they require a lot of a lot of development. I see that almost 48% of participants say they have no idea to make sure of the information related to the climate. 
and another uh, part says that they don't know how to make sure of this information. And this, of course, uh, involves, includes a lot of Arab countries, uh, which means that in all media platforms and outlets, when they say they don't have time to make sure of this information, which means that the, the people responsible for the news have no priority over this. So therefore, what they care about is to publish the news without making sure. So they care more about speeding up than making sure of the of the information. So this requires a lot of skills. Therefore, we need some training. And today's in today's world, you know, we have we live in the era of AI and uh, and a lot of fake news and misinformed inform and misinformation. And we have cared, you know, we should have always uh, took care of making sure of this information before it becomes published. And there are a lot of journalists who should be trained in this, uh, in this area. And how should we do this in general? Especially when it comes to all climate change related issues. Should always make go, go back to the news before and after they were published. And we have dealt with AFCN uh, in Arij, and it's working uh, actually for the time being on training journalists uh, when it comes to data and information related to climate change. And there are a number of links uh, for your information. We have also noticed that that the public that's all that's the weak that's misinformation can be dangerous actually when it comes to climate change but there is a lot of information that have to do with climate that include a lot of misinformation a lot of wrong information that were published by influencers in data in flyers and social media and many videos photos and sadly, some scientific research, uh, some un, which are not uh, accredited, also share a lot of misinformation. So therefore, we should also, so this requires us to develop a methodology in order to develop these researches and make sure that they are correct. We should be able to critically uh, discuss these matters when it comes to climate change. And we have to make sure that this information is correct by going back to resources, and all the open resources using the right tools, making sure the pictures, the videos, and if they are correct. Unfortunately, we feel like uh, a lot of people, they think they are experts in this area. And sometimes uh, they mislead information. And it is important to train to use open sources and uh, databases, especially in our world, where their our informations are confirmed. I'm proud of the journalists that they are they became experts in this area, and I invite everybody to um, make sure of the information and check check double check information about climate climate because this information is uh, related to our life and in my point of view my colleague Nadir Hamdi should ask about when we when the war and the human rights, they are not just uh, against the people and the animals and plants and climate and air and our lives, what we uh, breathe and how we live. This is related to uh, people 
leaving their countries because of these uh, climate changes. This leads to uh, wars. And leads to uh, gases burning in our uh, skies that uh, affects our lives. I'm glad uh, that we're meeting today. That we met, we met Khalid and I regarding this subject and uh, raising awareness about climate change in Arabic and in Arish Academy. A priority, we should uh, give priority to uh, this subject and uh, uh, care about it. Thank you very much, Rawan. Uh, you added uh, very important uh, points to this uh, webinar. Uh, you answered the, our colleagues Hamdi from Egypt uh, question and of course I'm going to answer all the other questions now to my colleague Afra who uh, she always uh, helps with the study thank you Khalid the one covered the most important parts. All I can add is to zoom in and focus on uh, from our uh, my point of view as a journalist, how I can uh, how can talk about this subject in my country Yemen. To the point when I start, uh, when I stopped reporting, who's and I already reported this uh, climate changes in, in many reports before, and I have two uh, remarks that I can say as a journalist. First of all, the knowledge and the ignorance in these subjects should be uh, I I should be uh, analyzing uh, analyzing everything and checking information and reading books to not um, and the, the more I research the more I research in uh, climate changing and the consequences of climate changing, for example, ag agriculture inside plastic rooms. However, it, it can impact and influence uh, the climate. It's very complex and it's not black and white. Uh, you should uh, always seek knowledge about this subject, uh, even if you are not uh, used to. So I started making interviews with people. And I noticed that they are giving me misinformation. And I, I could have uh, taken this information, even if it's not true. And that's the important part. And even the education, educational system should change in the Arab countries and MENA region more than the other countries. Even if we are not uh, primary, uh, the ones who are impacting the climate. But in our region, we should have the knowledge and awareness uh, as children from the beginning. And we should put pressure uh, on the educational system 
to include this subject. The educational system is already responsible uh, and pushes uh, pushes to uh, have more, more knowledge. However, it's not enough. Some journalists, I don't remember the percentage, but they think that the climate change is uh, a, na a natural disaster sent from God. <laughs> they uh, don't know that it is uh, partially related to the politics uh, of our government. So I make interviews and meetings and we have a knowledge crisis that starts from home, school, uh, even in uh, journalism. If the journalist is not a good journalist, he can hurt actually more than he can help. Even if the journalists are not supporting this subject, they um, and they are not putting it as a priority because they are prioritizing the other subjects that are related to wars, etc. The second part uh, regarding the uh, national investment, I think it's about time to um, uh, have uh, help each other as journalists. As uh, someone who works with uh, human rights in Yemen and other uh, Arab countries, I see uh, alliances between uh, organizations, national organizations. However, there's a gap uh, regarding climate change and everything related to environment. So I hope in the future uh, that there would be more alliances regarding this subject. Arija's web is one of those who uh, are focusing on this subject and prioritizing it. And, and uh, as, as long as we are helping each other, I think we're going to be stronger. Thank you very much, Apra, for your uh, precious contribution. And now to our colleague Zina Mejeri, who works uh, in this field. She checks information. And we already met in Arish in Om Om Oman. Please, Zina, you can start now, and we would like to hear your opinion about this study. You, and you already uh, checked the, the, the version. Thank you, Khalid. I would like to thank you very much for this uh, invitation and this webinar and this subject. Normally, the importance is given to other subjects like economy and politics. They never uh, prioritize climate change. I'm not an expert uh, in climate change or environment. However, Tunisia and Algeria are working hard in this subject. And personally, I have a personal story, like Afra said, everything related, everything related to climate and the environment, uh, we don't grow up with it since we we're little, like in our homes and schools. Most people think it's a uh, rich people's uh, subject. And we prioritize prioritize everything related to wars, politics, economy. 
However, this subject, climate change, is has the same importance or maybe more. It's not a luxury for the people who think it is. It's a basic thing to uh, prioritize like the other subjects equally. Even the population, they are not uh, interested in this subject. It's been years that I've been working in this field. I was, I had cancer, but thank God now I'm okay. And one of the recommendations that was given to my mother that uh, turtles meat is good to uh, treat cancer. My mother heard this from our neighbor and our neighbor heard from somebody else. So you can imagine the misinformation. So I found out that this information exists in Tunisia from years and years. That that the turtle's meat can cure cancer, but we know it's wrong. And it's a um, big misinformation. But at the same time, when, when you see the lack of hope in people who are sick and they have cancer, they can hold on to this information. It's more emotional than uh, reasonable. That's how I started to uh, be interested in everything related to environment and climate. And I worked with a great team. <laughs> Our problem today, uh, uh, today is that the population has a problem from years and years that is that they don't want to talk about it. They don't want to uh, uh, put it as a priority in our politics, especially in Tunisia. For example, in Tunisia, we have a lot of uh, organizations uh, for this kind of research. And even in high schools, we can introduce uh, the students uh, into uh, the subjects to get them interested. But we have a lack of investment. And even the uh, general existence of an establishment doesn't exist. And the problem with uh, the financial investment is that the priority is always to politics and economy. So I discovered lately the climate change subject doesn't have any priority and it doesn't have any consequences. However, it, it is the case. It has consequences on everything related to politics, economy, and socially. And people think that it is um, a separated subjects and not related, not a priority. So we, we know uh, about the economical situation in Tunisia and the political situation, but we don't know uh, anything about the climate. And uh, in fact, it uh, impacts everything uh, socially and politically, and economically. 
and there must be a switch to change uh, people's uh, point of view. The public should uh, start searching for uh, uh, climate change uh, issues and start uh, the public should be interested in everything related to climate because most people don't know that it is very important and it should be uh, an, a priority in everyday uh, everyday uh, life so if we change the public's opinion the journalist will opinion will change and the journalist behavior will change also and the politicians will opinions will change eventually everything is related so uh, I've been in WWF in North Africa, and we worked together, our team, uh, a very big team, we worked together uh, uh, in subjects related to environment and climate change. And for most people, they think it's a luxury to talk about climate, because we sh they should talk about everything related to politics and economic first. And once we're done with those subjects, yes, we can consider talking about climate change. Thank you, uh, Mr. Khalid, for this uh, study related to climate change in uh, MENA region. The most important part or the problem is not the misinformation, but also in the lack of information. The information doesn't exist. And that itself is misinformation. That's a big problem for uh, most journalists and the public opinion. The trust to worthiness in the subjects related to climate change. But uh, I won't add anything uh, new to what uh, Arish and said. We should give the same importance as politics. Like, for example, in Tunisia, we uh, have in high schools or in schools in general, we talk about politics. Uh, so we have enough information, uh, information about politics and economics in schools, but not enough uh, information about uh, environment and climate change. Our problem in Tunisia, uh, us journalists, that we study this uh, subject, but to it is possible to have two experts saying two uh, information, uh, two different information. This is because our studies are not uh, updated, they're not up to date. And of course, it's because uh, nobody's interested in uh, this matter. And that's not just Tunisia, but it's in the Arabic world in general. So the most uh, most information uh, is coming from outside the Arab uh, countries. With all respect. If you don't go out and do research in your own uh, geographical area, it's not the same thing as having information from outside. So I think uh, the journalist can change the opinion, the public opinion, if they succeed to change pub 
Netflix uh, interest uh, related to uh, climate change and convince them that it uh, impacts them directly and indirectly. So I think the next step, if we succeed to do that, the next step is uh, decision makers would be uh, interested too. Climate change should be a, a topic subject in politics, it's not just a passing issue because it impacts us, uh, impacts us directly. And it's the mother of all issues. Thank you, Khaled. This is all I have to say. Thank you, Zeno, for this uh, analysis. Uh, Rawan already answered the question. The climate change case is a human rights change uh, case. It's part of uh, human rights uh, cases. I have my own question. Uh, says uh, the colleague Ahmed. Do we have the same obstacles uh, in Kurdish? Yes, uh, I am answering yes to this question. I speak both languages and we have a lack of information in Kurdish, but we are translating and we are still in Kurdish, we are still in the beginning and we are facing obstacles and difficulties. They say that there is uh, young uh, groups in Tunisia and in Iraq and Jordan. But we, fo we, we won't focus on just little groups, but uh, we are speaking in general. We have a question from Morocco from the colleague Mohamed Abtash. Are there any pr uh, uh, free platforms so we can follow up on uh, climate change subjects and satellites. The answer, <clears throat> we have uh, services like Google and Copernicus also uh, contributes to uh, provide services and NASA, they all provide services But if you want uh, deep uh, knowledge about these reports, you should refer to IPCC. And there is another information. IPBS. This organization, scientific, inter international, related to uh, environment. So if you want to have information about regarding oceans, uh, lands, and living diversity, you, you can refer to IBPS. Before I come back to you, Zina, I have a question from Salah Malkawi, Mulkawi from Jordan. There are journalists. There are journalists who are specialized in environments, uh, however, not in climate specifically, and I agree with uh, with this. 
And we have another comment from Majida Tafra, professor. She talks about She uh, talks about climate change in uh, North Africa, specifically. And journalists in uh, MENA region and North Africa can uh, work with other journalists uh, I will talk about this in Abu Dhabi uh, conference. Thank you, Majda. Do we have a remark, Zeno? It's not a remark. It's an answer to uh, a comment about technology. investigative journalism links. If we go in, we can see icons. There's a, a, a tree symbol. And you can follow up on every subject related to climate change. And, uh, and a lot of links and other tools that you can use to do research related to climate. I'd like to uh, address this question to Ms. Rawa. <clears throat> Thank you, Khalid. ممكن تعيد لأن الترجمة كانت مخ مخبطة عيد لي سؤال ال الإعلامي نفسه ولا المتلقين الجمهور Uh, 
يعني على السريع اريد اتكلم عن الاعلامي وعن الجمهور ايضا يعني الاعلامي المفروض يشوف هذا كتحدي حتى لو هو خايف انه في 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 عنده نقص معرفه او هو مش ملم جدا بالموضوع المفروض يشوفه كتحدي وما يعني بالعكس ما يخاف يستمتع وهو بيبحث عشان يوصل لحقيقه ويعمل لنا زي ما يقولوا جراوند بريكنج ريبورت يعني تقرير فعلا لم يسبق تغطيته من قبل موضوع لم يسبق يعني يعني ما في اعلامي او صحفي حقيقي ما يستمتع لما يوصل لهذه المرحله لما يكون عنده معلومه فعلا يريد يلهم بها الاخرين معلومه جديده اما بالنسبه للجمهور اعتقد يعني اذا اذا يعني ما اعتقد الموضوع هو يعني ما في خطه مسبقه ان احنا كاعلاميين نريد نخوف الجمهور احنا كاعلاميين من كثر ما الفرص محدوده والمحررين الداعمين محدودين وصعوبه الـ يعني الـ تغطيه الموضوع يعني انت انت غصبا عنك بتدق ناقوس الخطر بطريقه ممكن تخوف لو هو موضوع عادي يحصل كل يوم يعني يعني او انه سهل ان انا اطلع هذا التقرير كل يوم عادي أنا كإعلامية ما بكون بموقف إن أنا أتكلم يعني كلمات فعلا تخوف في التقرير، وفعلا يعني الحقائق اليوم يعني خذ اليمن على سبيل المثال كرة كرة تم تم مسحها يعني النازحين خيمهم راحت في اليمن وصلنا لمرحلة من كثر ما في فيضانات الألغام اللي مش معروف فين محطوطة بالضبط فين نقاط الالتماس وكذا الفيضانات صارت بتاخذها لاماكن يعني حتى المقاتلين مش عارفين فين راحت الان. اي لحظه في اي مكان تدخل مسجد، تدخل مدرسه، يعني عفوا يعني كيف ما اخوفك؟ يعني انا مش اللي اخوفك هي الحقائق يعني هي حق انا مش انا كاعلاميه ولا صحفيه يعني انا اللي اريد اخوف اي حد، لا يعني احنا مش في هالوين ولا شيء. احنا الوضع الغام بتتحرك من نفسها يعني مش من نفسها بالفيضانات طبعا موضوع ليبيا يعني هو موضوع شائك وفي سياسات تاريخيه في في ليبيا في البنيه التحتيه وكذا لكن ساهم الى يعني الكارثه اللي حصلت فيها ساهم فيها الـ 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 يعني التغير المناخي يعني ما اريد كمان اساهم في التضليل وكذا بس يعني هي فعلا موضوع معقد لكن احنا واصلين لهذه المرحله يعني يعني قرانا بتختفي يعني فمش نحن اللي بنخوف هي الفاكتس اتس اوريدي فاكتس اتس حقيقه يعني مش راي يعني مش راي هو شكرا انت استاذ خالد مره قلت لي البيئه المناخ او البيئه وارضنا هي ضحيه صامته ف يعني ما تتكلم عنها وت يعني يعني وت وت So if uh, I believe in 2015 there were uh, floods in Jordan and in other seas that this caused was killed over 17 students in these areas. But this is not to scare people away. Uh, so therefore, should point out to point out that to societies that this is this has nothing to do with scaring them away. This is facts that are due to uh, climate change, the switch in temperature, and uh, other aspects that have uh, increased lately. Also, we we'll, we we'll talk about the workers who work outside on the fields in 50 degrees Celsius. So they should know how these people are enduring all this. Also, the pregnant women should be aware yeah, because the pregnant women suffer a lot on the physical level, psychologically. 
so she should be aware of how to protect herself and her baby. So what I'm saying here is contributing here to raising awareness within our societies. So therefore, I have a question. Does uh, true, Khalid? What happened? Uh, was happened in in 2018 due to the floods? It was 2018, not 15. Thank you, Rawan, for correcting the information. Yes. Sadly, uh, we see here Afrah uh, has left the conversation for an urgent matter, and we hope that everything is fine on her side, and we'll try to call her again uh, later. Uh, she had to leave, and she still left a message. Thank you all, but um, I have to leave now. Now, Miss Zina, I might ask you the last question. How does eating turtles help uh, get cured from cancer diseases? Uh, as you can see in China, in Asian countries, in the Middle East, uh, eating animals has become an issue. And we can see here there's a lack of awareness, a lack of education. Uh, 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 on the importance of creatures in protecting us. So when we lose these animals like turtles, uh, birds and uh, the rest, losing any of these types of animals will cause an imbalance within our nature. So these things are, co are connected to us, our rights and our living. Uh, now I'm going to ask you again, Zena, if you can answer me in one minute, please. As uh, since you work in Arij, are there any real attempts to make sure of this information, which is being published without being sure about uh, whether it's correct or not when it comes to climate? In fact, you can see business news, for instance, in in Tunisia and uh, other amongst other institutions. We are, and this is still new to us, and the issues parameters is still new to us. The, there is a, a young group called Stop Pollution in Tunisia who are working working hard. And this group, and for more than once, uh, they get arrested uh, and they get restricted just because the, they go on strikes or demonstrations in order to address the climate issues. And since, and we all know that the Tunisian government has signed a number of contracts that. Uh, do not help the question of environments in the country. And I think that our age average is 25 within this group. And this has to do also to do with the, the risks and the issues when while doing this. They, they risk their lives, their future, just to cover this. So the issue itself requires our youth and our journalists to be committed completely in order to, uh, uh, they should be ready to risk their freedom too, in order to be able to cover this correct way. As we were uh, talking about, uh, we were talking about the turtles. We have tried to talk about it, how beautiful it is. And, you know, uh, that story we like to uh, publish to the public shouldn't do this, shouldn't do that. We have changed strategy and we've started with economy, society and politics. So the first thing we've done with regard to this subject, we talked 
we said that we know that turtles eat uh, shell. Some sort of plants. Some sort of plants. So in in Tunisia, in Tunisia we have a problem with the, the fish industry in our country. So automatically, uh, this has become a, a subject and a joke in the in our markets. So we're trying to touch base with the economic and social issues in order to be able to access the environmental uh, aspects of the issue. So thanks to Stop Pollution, we are a number of young people, except for a couple of them. And they are doing a great job. And sometimes we take them as our main sources of information. Thank you, Zena, Miss Rowan. Okay, Rowan, if you have uh, something else to add, please take over. From a colleague, Hanan Mudahir. She has a comment. She says there are two parts in uh, climate, uh, climate uh, cases, especially in MENA region. And uh, And in uh, Africa and Asia, <clears throat> and we should raise awareness about investment from uh, bigger countries uh, to uh, cover the losses and the damages. In Iraq, for example, or Lebanon or Jordan, uh, $100 million is Here's a is not an enough amount. Should be uh, programs well organized and and work on uh, laws and involve women and uh, local and the public and create big projects that can affect. Uh, the climate change and uh, expert journalists can uh, cover this uh, subject in Yemen or Morocco and investing in 100 million dollar is not uh, enough Awan back to you again Thank you, uh, Dr. Hanan Amin. Back to you, Rawan. Do you have uh, any other comments? <laughs> First of all, the plants uh, Zina talked about, uh... <clears throat> Thank you, uh, everybody, uh, and every journalist who work on this uh, matter, and everybody who are double checking information to avoid misinformation. And it's not about Tunisia, Morocco, or Jordan. We found a lot of differences in the reports and lots of things in common, too. And we should work together uh, and uh, <laughs> we should work together definitely uh, to cover the gaps, the many gaps existing today uh, in this matter. And we have a lot of challenges in our region, the MENA region. And thank you very much for inviting me.
Thank you very much. And before I go back to Zina. Uh, thank you, Ninka from Holland. For those who are interested in uh, the environment and the uh, PAX projects. And she works in this uh, region in Iraq and other uh, places. Thank you for your contribution, Ninka. Do you have any other thing to add, Zina? As much as it seems that the climate change is a complex subject, but uh, as soon as you start working on it and you find uh, confirmed uh, sources, it's simple. And experts are available and, and sources are available. It shouldn't be any barriers uh, to uh, for journalists to write about this uh, subject accurately. And thank you very much for this study. Thank you all. And all I have to tell my colleagues, uh, the ones present today, we know each other and we work together. And thank you for your uh, presence. And if you have any interests or projects or new projects in, in the Internews website, I can put it in uh, the social media. And we have a collaboration between Internews and Arij uh, regarding this uh, subject and this study. And you can all uh, check uh, this uh, in uh, Arij's uh, website. Thank you very much, and I hope you. Uh, I I hope this study is helpful. And I wish you all a very good end of the day, very good evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.